Recently, a list was posted online listing a total of 31 unfinished skyscrapers that are over 450 meters tall in China. Shockingly, 19 of them are either unfinished or basically abandoned, and those that are under construction have barely started or just off the ground. For example, the Sky City in Changsha, planned to reach a staggering 838 meters, was said to become the world's tallest building. The total investment exceeded 5 billion yuan. Originally highly anticipated, the construction site of Sky City has been little progress beyond a vast excavation since its groundbreaking in 2013. The construction project has not made any progress so far, making it one of the biggest unfinished projects in Changsha's urban planning. Look, this big pond ahead. Although I've never been here, judging from my experience, the construction site should be here. Right now, you can't even tell there was a construction site here before. There's a shed next to the pond, probably where the local villagers raise ducks. If you go a little farther, it's all rural areas. There are various reasons for why the Sky City was abandoned, including the developer's broken capital chain and incomplete procedures leading to illegal construction. The Golden Finance 117 is a building located in the Tianjin Binghai High-Tech Industry Development Zone in China and is said to be the largest unfinished building in Asia. The entire project consists of the central business district supporting residential areas and the Tianjin Golden Metropolitan Polo Park. It was named after its 117 floors reaching the height of 597 meters. The total construction area of the building is 2.3 million square meters and the structural height is 596.5 meters, second only to the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. Construction began in 2008. On December 30th, 2013, the concrete construction of the Golden Finance 117 was completed. However, due to the extremely difficult topping out process, the project was delayed by about a year. On August 30th, 2015, the main structure was finally topped, but the developer ran into problems leading to another halt in construction. Although it was expected to be completed in 2017, the company is responsible for the Golden Finance 117 project also undertook multiple other development projects at the time. As the company's stock price soared, they chose to transfer funds to other projects instead of completing the finishing works on the Golden Finance 117. However, the company's stock price began to plummet shortly after soaring, causing the company to fall into trouble. Its market value evaporated by more than 120 billion Hong Kong dollars and the capital chain broke. The project remained unfinished. The Ximao Shenzhen Hong Kong International Center, known as the tallest skyscraper in Shenzhen, has also become an unfinished building, and it is unclear who will take over. The original plan was to build the Shenzhen Hong Kong International Center into a 700 meter high landmark building with an investment of up to 50 billion yuan and include international schools and other facilities. At the end of 2017, Shanghai Ximao Co Limited successfully purchased the development land of the Shenzhen Hong Kong International Center at a high price of 23.9 billion yuan, setting the second highest record in the history of Shenzhen land auctions that year. Shimao planned to complete 50% of the project within three years and complete the entire project within five years. At the time, Shimao's vice chairman of the board, Xu Shitan, confidently stated, once this plan is finished, the total value of the project is expected to exceed 70 billion yuan and the annual rental income will exceed 3 billion yuan. It is reported that the ambitious plan for the Shenzhen Hong Kong International Center project has fallen into difficulty due to the impact of height restrictions imposed by the Chinese Ministry of Housing and Urban Rural Development, coupled with factors such as tightening regulations in the real estate industry and financial constraints in recent years. In 2022, Ximao faced a debt crisis leading to the suspension of construction of the Shenzhen Hong Kong International Center to this day. Shenzhen Shimao New Mileage Industry Co. Limited has been subject to 11 executions, with a total amount reaching 9.1 billion yuan and is facing serious debt problems. Among them, the largest amount applied to execution by City Trust was approximately 6.1 billion yuan. In May 2023, the Beijing Municipal High People's Court ruled that the Shenzhen Hong Kong International Center project had been listed as a key risk construction project. 
Some homeowners chose to repossess the building on their own, but those who have purchased these luxury units are facing the transition from wealthy individuals to owners of unfinished properties, which is heart-wrenching for them. A friend of mine spent over 1.6 million in 2020 to buy an apartment in the Shenzhen Hong Kong International Centre project. In 2022, he received news of Shi Mao's bankruptcy. Apart from all the savings he had worked hard for seven or eight years, he also borrowed a considerable amount from both sets of parents. Now he can't even face his parents in law. Currently, the second phase of the Shenzhen Hong Kong International Centre has resumed construction and is expected to be delivered on time by June 2024. However, as the project has been unfinished in the past and has been plagued by numerous disputes and difficulties, delays in delivery cannot be ruled out. Although homeowners are hoping to receive the apartment on time, the final outcome depends on whether the project party and construction party can complete the project on time and resolve all issues. Therefore, homeowners need to be prepared for possible delays. As we know, one of the biggest risks home buyers face is encountering an unfinished building. Therefore, in recent years, completed apartments have become the preferred choice when purchasing. Even if they cannot enjoy the value-added benefits during the construction period, buyers tend to choose completed apartments because the security of funds is the bottom line for real estate investment. The 12 billion yuan Chengdu Greenland Tower in Shichuan Province is a project invested by Greenland Group in July 2012. With a proposed height of 468 meters, the main tower is intended to rank as the seventh tallest globally, the fourth tallest in China, and notably, it is said to be the tallest tower in Chengdu as well as in all of Western China. Construction of Greenland Tower began as early as July 2012, with the original plan for completion in 2019, which was not achieved. The group once denied rumors of suspension, but currently the building is 20 meters away from completion and remains on hold. Although Greenland Group is actively raising funds and seeking partners to resume construction as soon as possible, the resumption of work is still far away. Home buyers are suffering and the presence of Chengdu's tallest incomplete building will remain a lasting image. The situation with Hubei Tower in Shenzhen, Guangdong is as follows. The tower was originally planned to reach a height of 838 meters, which was set to be 10 meters higher than the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. However, as the project progressed, the design of the tower was forced to be reduced to 499 meters due to various reasons, including engineering complexity and financial issues. Only a few dozen meters have been constructed since 2022, and construction is still ongoing. Given the current situation, observers estimate that the project may face a risk of suspension at any time in the future, with the outcome unpredictable. In addition, Wuhan City in Hubei province once planned to build four skyscrapers, CTF Finance Center, Chushan Mansion, the Bund Foshan Center, and the Guosha Financial Tower. These projects are large-scale projects with tens of billions of investments and started construction in 2018. Among them, Chu Shan Mansion was jointly initiated and funded by several well-known private companies such as Taikan Life Insurance and China Chenxin Credit Rating Group. However, the construction of the project was suspended soon after they started and have been basically abandoned. For the other three buildings, although the construction has been carried out in the past few years, the buildings are yet to rise above ground level. These commercial skyscrapers' developments are situated in the prime centers of their respective cities, holding important geographical locations and strategic value. However, due to various reasons such as financial problems, management difficulties and market changes, these projects have been suspended and remained on hold. Other projects such as the Shenyang Baonan Global Financial Center, the Hefei Baonanchen and the Hefei Evergrande Center and the Dalian Greenland Center are also facing similar difficulties. These unfinished projects not only affect investors and developers but also have a negative impact on the image and economic development of the cities. Evergrande City of Light in Ningbo, Zhejiang began construction in 2011 with a total investment of about 13 billion yuan. With a height of 450 meters, it once attracted much attention. Previously, it was announced to be completed by 2026, but after the Evergrande incident, its foundation pit has now turned into a pond. Some netizens posted that this is a scar left by Evergrande in Ningbo. The so-called 200-meter-high city of light has now turned into this. On March 18th, after being detained for 172 days, the chairman of China's real estate giant, Evergrande Group, Xu Jiaying, 
was fined a huge sum by the China Securities Regulatory Commission for suspected financial fraud and other illegal acts. He continues to face criminal liability. Evergrande left behind a staggering 1.6 million unfinished buildings, affecting 6 million homeowners. This huge number reflects the severity of the group's debt crisis. The outside world is widely concerned about the future plans of Evergrande Group. Some analysts believe that the Chinese government may intervene to take over or reorganize Evergrande Group to maintain social stability. In similar crises in the past, the Chinese government has stepped in and dispatched working groups to dispose of assets, conduct orderly closures or mergers and acquisitions. The government may adopt financial aid, encourage developers to continue working or other policy measures to stabilize the market. In addition, some viewpoints suggest that large state-owned enterprises could take over Evergrande's business to minimize the impact on existing homeowners. However, these acquiring companies will face the same problems as Evergrande and bear enormous risk. The government also needs to consider the controversy and uncertainty that such a plan may provoke. The above-mentioned skyscrapers were started during the booming period of China's real estate market a few years ago, and their abandonment coincides with the bursting of the real estate bubble. There is an important historical background behind this. At that time, the entire Chinese real estate market was in a period of rapid development. The real estate industry's zeal for expanding scale and erecting skyscrapers has resulted in numerous unfinished structures. Now, casualties of a bursting market bubble This situation marks a historical turning point and is a natural outcome in the evolution of the real estate sector. Furthermore, Chinese society is official-centric and government officials tend to push for showcase projects to show off their achievements and power. However, this behavior is to some extent criticized as seeking quick success and instant benefits as these showcase projects are seen as a waste of human, financial and social resources. This perspective highlights skepticism towards projects aimed at bolstering government image and worries over the potential misuse of governmental authority. As of August 24th, 2023, more than 30 large real estate companies in China have gone bankrupt. Data shows that Evergrande Real Estate has a debt of 2.4 trillion yuan. Country Garden has debts of 1.43 trillion yuan. Bank Real Estate has debt of 1.35 trillion yuan. Greenland Holding has debt of 1.2 trillion yuan. Poly Real Estate has debt of 1.14 trillion yuan. Sunak China Holding has debt of 1 trillion yuan. China Resources Land has debt of 740 billion yuan. And Longfo Properties has debt of 572 billion yuan. The debt crisis among real estate developers has burst the property market bubble, resulting in a downturn. Additionally, The prevalence of unfinished buildings has notably affected China's economy. Banks are unable to recover a large amount of bad debt, planned undeveloped land site idle, land prices plummet, and many second-time home buyers find their properties turn into liabilities. The situation of unfinished building in China is so severe that it may lead to dire consequences. As early as last year, Nomura Securities chief economist of China, Lu Ting, stated that the scale of unfinished pre-sales housing in China is shocking, equivalent to about 20 times of that China's largest private real estate developer, Country Garden. It is estimated that there are approximately 20 million unfinished pre-sale units in China. Nomura's report suggests that it would take about 3.2 trillion yuan to complete the construction of these housing units. In China, many apartments are sold before completion, with delivery dates continuously postponed. The number of unfinished buildings continues to increase. Therefore, the top priority of the government's current policy is to ensure the completion of pre-sale housing. Home buyers are becoming increasingly impatient with the delayed delivery of their purchased properties. Many pre-sale buyers have decided to stop paying monthly installments despite heavy losses. Nomura predicts that at some point in 2024, the issue of delayed deliveries will threaten social stability. The effectiveness of governmental policy support will be crucial in determining if confidence in the real estate market and the broader economy can be genuinely reinstated. Although the CCP has allocated hundreds of billions of dollars to help developers complete sold properties, the problem of unfinished buildings in China continues to worsen. The Chinese government has established a special loan of 350 billion yuan, about 48 billion, to help developers who are short of funds complete the construction of pre sale projects. The People's Bank of China also stated that if large commercial banks provide loans, 
to developers for the same purpose, it will provide these banks with interest-free loans of up to 200 billion yuan, about 27 billion. However, a large part of these funds remain idle. According to the largest quarterly report from the People's Bank of China, as of September, the lending rate was only about 3%. Some struggling real estate developers have told the Wall Street Journal that they cannot meet the loan requirements for commercial banks and unfinished projects cannot obtain financing. They also stated that obtaining loans from local government is very difficult and the selection process for eligible projects lacks transparency with different cities facing different situations. Some professional analysts believe that this is mainly because banks want to avoid risks. In some cases, banks tell developers that they will only provide loans if the project offers enough collateral to protect the bank from default. This collateral may include land and unsold apartments. Meanwhile, only residential projects that were mostly pre-sold but not delivered on time are eligible for national aid. While providing loans to developers has become a political mandate for state-owned banks, they still need to assess risk and avoid losses. The decline in the real estate market has led to a decline in the asset value, further affecting developers' ability to obtain financing. At some time, the issue of unfinished building has led to a sharp increase in protests in China. The China Decent Monitor project of the Human Rights Organization Freedom House shows that from July 2022 to October 2023, there were at least 1,777 protests related to real estate industry in China. Two-thirds of these protests were related to unfinished, delayed, or poorly constructed building projects. The remaining protests were mainly initiated by construction workers demanding payments of overdue wages. Currently, there are about 50 to 70 protests occurring each month. These protests have spread across the country, and since June 2022, they have been protests in 276 cities in China. For instance, on March 26, in front of the municipal government of Chenzhou City, owners of unfinished buildings protested for their rights. On March 24, in Taiyuan, Shanxi province, the notable mansion housing projects remained on hold for seven years without delivery. Owners gather at the sales office to protest. On March 21st, hundreds of owners of unfinished buildings in Shuzhou, Jiangsu province initiated a protest by blocking traffic and confronting the police. These owners are from the Wanda Chuye mansion in Sunning County. Despite paying mortgages for five years, they have yet to receive their homes. Even though there have been multiple protests over the past few years, the project remains on hold. The predicament of homeowners paying for non-existent properties while still shouldering monthly loan repayment is distressingly common in China, affecting millions. This situation akin to financial robbery is exacerbated by the intertwined interest of real estate developers, banks and government agencies complicating resolution efforts. The unfinished skyscrapers are the result of CCP's own fault and there is no remedy available now. The CCP can't even save residential real estate, let alone rescue unfinished commercial skyscrapers. They can only continue to remain on hold. The situation of unfinished skyscrapers is significantly linked to the policies and oversight of the Chinese Communist Party, revealing a notable failure in regulatory governance. The government cannot even rescue residential real estate, let alone commercial skyscrapers. These projects can only remain indefinitely on hold.